Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Street Race Talk, episode number 323. And this week, we have some controversy and conspiracies to discuss for the main topic. More on that later on in this week's episode. We actually are going to begin by discussing two phenomenal races that recently happened. Well, one was recent last weekend, and the other one we just recently saw on Monday night, and that is the one we will begin the race we saw on Monday night. For those that don't know, the 405 show had its first out-of-town race in years, although it wasn't a normal out-of-town race, where we normally just see the 405 walk up to another group, they have their call-outs in the driver's meeting, and it's just grudge races from then on out. They had the whole driver's meeting thing, and they were talking back and forth about the rules and stuff, although instead of calling each other out, they drew from a hat, because they had like a, it's called a hat race, I believe is the term that they use, but for those that don't know or aren't familiar with it, it's just like a normal cash days style race, as we've seen many times in the past on Street Outlaws. And for this race, we had, obviously, the 405 racing against not only Chicago, but also Kansas City as well. Now, something they did in the first round, which I thought was really cool, is something they actually did way back when, when Cash Days first began. What they did was have the 405 guys and everyone else draw out of separate hats, from what I understand. Therefore, it'd make it so the 405 isn't racing 405 in round one to eliminate stuff such as that. Something that was a small detail that was in the early cash days and wasn't in recent ones that they added in this race that I thought was really cool. Although, obviously, this race isn't a cash days. Nevertheless, you guys get what I mean. So we had an instance where we didn't see the 405 run against any other 405 guys running out of town race with the cash day style event. It was so cool to see. If I'm not mistaken, the 4 or 5 ended up winning every race we've seen so far, even their small tire cars. The race overall has been really good. The episode was great. I've already seen some people complaining, oh, we saw X amount of races per X amount of commercial breaks. I mean, when you look at the actual numbers, I agree it's kind of, it was a little ridiculous, but I thought the episode was good. The flow of the episode, I don't feel, was interrupted by the amount of commercial breaks we saw per race. Overall, I really enjoyed the episode and was one of my favorite episodes to watch for as long as I can remember in regards to the 405 shows because of the fact we had the out of town. It was so much fun watching the stream with you all. Make sure you guys tune to the stream this Monday night, 6.50 p.m. Central Standard Time once again, where we will be watching part two of this race where we get to see a whole bunch of awesome matchups go down. I can't wait to see this race. And the thing is, too, there's races I'm positive happen. Like, stuff we've discussed in the past, stuff I was using to hype it up. I'm not going to say it in that right now in case of any spoilers. But there's races we discussed in the past that by who won and lost in round one shouldn't happen in the normal race. So there might be some additional, like, grudge races we see afterwards just to maybe a little sneak peek again that I, I don't have really inside information on that that's just kind of what I'm assuming but trying to could you imagine how cool that would be if we get some bonus races at the end it's oh next week's episode is gonna be so much fun to watch I can't wait to see it my pick to win obviously I want to see the big chief win and as we mentioned in the stream highlights and in the stream obviously as well that last pass big chief made was it was moving. But again, it's like we only see it on the TV. Who knows how it actually looked in real life. From how we saw it in the episode, I don't think there's any arguing. That looked like the fastest pass. It was insane. And also, too, I, if Big Chief doesn't win, I think it'd be really cool to see Dominator win. He had an awesome test hit. Good first pass. Could you guys imagine how cool it would be if we see Dominator win this thing? That would be so awesome to see. But overall... I really enjoyed the episode. It was cool to see a bunch of other names. I was not expecting to see guys like Larry Larson out there in the truck. Robin Roberts out there. And seeing Robin Roberts run Ryan Martin. What an awesome matchup that is. And then seeing the KC Max Firebird out there. That was so cool as well. And one thing I want to say is I thought... I'm surprised we didn't see this on the episode. Because, again, I do apologize when I'm call recalling back on this, because I believe this took place in May, which is about nine months ago as of right now. And I thought the Studebaker was there. I thought the Studebaker showed up to race, but didn't actually race. I know for a fact it didn't race, but I thought there was some, like, drama around it not racing. And I thought we would see that on the TV show, or them at least show the car. Because for those that don't know what this vehicle is, it's a ProMod-esque Studebaker, I mean, to be fair, the Pro Mod esque what car is it nowadays, to be completely honest, but that's like the kind of, because I don't want to say Studebaker and you think one thing, it's like, it's a race car Studebaker with a wicked nasty blower sticking out of the hood, 
and outside of the big tire street outlaw cars, this is arguably, if not the fastest big tire car on the street. Again, outside of the street outlaw guys, but even including the street outlaw guys from stuff I've heard from, I've seen people talk about this car, passes I've seen this car make in videos. This thing is gnarly and wicked fast for sure. If you're talking guys outside of street outlaws, this is the guy to beat in big tire street racing in the current era we live in right now. And I thought he was there. And I thought there was drama around him not racing. And I'm shocked that we haven't seen anything of the car. Again, it might be in a different episode. You might see it in the next episode. But again, if any of you have any information on that, please in the comment section down below. I'll definitely bring it up again in the stream this Monday night and try and address it once again. But that was just one thing because I was looking forward to seeing that car and we just didn't see it at all. But hey, that leaves something on the table for another episode in the future. I Big Chief mentioned that in the video they him and Jackie made when they went to McDougal's shop. He said, hey, it leaves it on the table to do something in the future so we could potentially see that car in a different episode of Street Outlaws. But then transitioning on over into another race that took place this past weekend. It was an awesome small tire OG DFWSS cash days that Limpy put on. If I'm sure a lot of you watched the video on the Midwest Streetcars channel, Chief and Jackie covered it themselves a bit. And as of when I'm recording this video right now, I haven't seen any of the other really big uh, like channels post video, like a full scale video of this race yet. Channels like uh, 660 Streets, 1320, NX Gonzo, Big Rob. I haven't seen any of them post any full coverage video yet so i assume they're still working on them when they do post those videos i will update you guys and let them know because i'm gonna be watching them myself because this race oh my gosh this race was so cool some of the names that were out there were some of the fastest small tire cars there are including the likes of boosty gt beater bomb cali nate and the kc max firebird now one thing real quick i want to bring up that i'm actually pretty interested in in regards to boosty gt this past weekend, he was in that race, racing in the yellow car. Although this past week as well, I do believe this took place after the cash days. He posted a test hit of the orange car on small tires. So is he going to be, if like, for example, if another race like this happens soon, which car is he going to be in? That's something I'm interested in to follow up some more in the future. But again, in regards to the other cars that were there, Beater Bomb was there. He was having difficulties and he got lucky in the first round. If I, it might, it was the first or second round. I don't recall which one it was, but Beater Bomb pulled up to the line. He was having issues with this starter, but the guy he was supposed to race didn't even show up to the line. So Beater Bomb got lucky and got a bye there. Ended up losing, I believe, in the next round to the KC Max Firebird, one of the fastest street cars we have ever seen. Then that same car ended up beating Cali Nate in the finals. For those that don't know, we've seen Cali Nate's the guy. He had the, I think it's called the My Little Pony Fox Body Mustang. We saw it on this past season of Street Outlaws Memphis a whole bunch. And he had the Ford Lightning truck as well. It was that guy that was racing. And he is also the driver of the Z unit. That car is apparently coming back as well. But he wasn't even in the Z unit. Not apparently coming back, by the way. That car is back. He wasn't in that car, though. He was in this Chevy 2, and I didn't, I, I, my bad, I didn't even recognize that was his car at first. I'm like, I was watching the Midwest video, I'm like, man, this Chevy 2 is sweet. I love this thing. Then like, oh, shoot, wait, that's Nate driving that thing? It, I was like, oh my gosh, that car is so good. Hey, that guy's just got a whole slew of cool cars. His Fox body, I mean, I don't know about all the Fox bodies. I'll, I, I think it's a pretty cool one. The Lightning Truck. The Z unit, then this Nova. I mean, man, he's got some sweet cars, but unfortunately, he lost to the KC Max Firebird in the finals. Like, again, this car is just next level fast. And we actually saw this car on this past episode of Street Outlaws. It raced the Murder Nova. Now, the KC Max Firebird was on big tires, and the murder, OG Murder Nova was coming off a winless season. So he was due for a win, and he just so happened to get it against the KC Max Firebird. It was within, like, super duper close. To be fair, if Sean didn't pull the shoots early, if I wouldn't have been as close. But nevertheless, it was a really close race. Sean barely ended up winning. And I think that's just a true testament of everything because I was thinking about this earlier like how should I talk about th that race itself in street race talk and you can really go both ways on it because you could look at the murder nova and say okay the murder nova is one of the fast winningest cars we have ever seen in street outlaws we saw him come off a struggling season but still he managed to beat the 
fastest guy on the street right now. The fastest small tire car out there, arguably. He beat without even winning a race before. And he was racing the 405, couldn't manage to get one win, yet he beat arguably the fastest guy there is on the street right now. Then at the same time, you could say, well, look at the KC Max Fire, but this is a small tire car and was within half a car, within a bumper of the winningest street car of all time. The OG Murder Nova. Like the, you could say like to look, to bring into light and shine on the KC Max Fire and also show how fast the 405 is. Like everything about that race and then that this car, the KC Max Fire This, like, we got Ryan Martin with the dominance in Street Outlaws right now. And for those that might not follow along too closely with all the real street or the small tire stuff with the street and no prep, it's the same thing. I'm it, literally in my mind right now. The Casey Max Firebird to real street racing and the like legit no prep stuff is what Ryan Martin is to Street Outlaws right now. That's a, wait, what an analogy I just came up with on the spot. That's how fast this guy is right now. And the true dominance he has. Overall, the race was awesome to see. I watched the Midwest video. Make sure you guys check that out. It was Chief and Jackie's perspective and thoughts on the race. And also, too, I will be sure to update you guys once channels such as 1320 and 660 Streets, just to name a few, will be posting their full phenomenal videos of this awesome race, which went down. And now time to transition on over into the main topic. And this main topic, I'm not going to lie, I didn't even know I was going to make it as the main topic because some people were talking about this last week and then more people were talking about it this week and then as this week's gone on i've just been getting more and more and more and more questions and comments in regards to this and it is about the commentary for street outlaws for those that have been watching these past couple of episodes you may have noticed that chief hasn't been doing very much of the commentary for most specifically this most recent episode and the episode before the main narrator of the episode has been sean now that's something we haven't seen in the past now to be fair with the out-of-town races, we haven't always seen Big Chief as the main guy. Other guys we've seen do commentary in the past are guys such as Farm Truck and Asian. We've seen Chuck do it. I want to say we heard Dave do it before. And I think we've heard Sean do commentary before. But nevertheless, there's no question that we're seeing Sean. Sean's the main narrator right now for these past couple of episodes. And a lot of people have been asking why. Why is this the case? And a lot of people believe it is due to the America's List situation with Chief. Now, I could be wrong about this. This is just my guess and opinion as to how this situation has played out. The Big Chief situation at America's List took place after this filming took place. There's no question about that. Although I also believe that the Big Chief situation with America's List took place after these episodes were already full final production and finished. For instance, this current season of the 405 show began airing before America's List began filming. And I would assume that they would have all the episodes completely finalized by the time episode one has aired, seeing that this was filmed so long ago, again, about nine months as we currently sit right now. I know there's been instances in their past where the show's airing and the final episodes aren't done, but again, taking into account how long ago this show was filmed, I assumed it was fully complete before it started airing on TV. And as a result of that, I don't believe there's any correlation between the Big Chief situation with America's List and the narrator slash commentary for these most recent episodes. That's my current standing and my answer to the question a lot of you have been asking with why isn't Big Chief commentating on Street Outlaws anymore? I don't believe it has anything to do with the America's List situation. And again, according to Sheree, with her inside information, Big Chief isn't even done with Street Outlaws in the first place. So I don't even know no, like, I don't, I don't know, like, a good explanation, though, as to why Sean's the one doing it. Maybe just to give the Big Chief a break. Maybe because they filmed these interview scenes of the commentary during No Prep Kings when film crews were with Sean rather than they were obviously not with Big Chief because Sean was doing No Prep King or film crews there. There might be some correlation in regards to that. I honestly don't know too many details. And again, this is something that isn't, like, we don't find information about this stuff like we don't really know too many of the details about the the interviews or like the commentary scenes we don't know too much stuff about all that is going on we do know that all the 405 guys were at ryan martin's shop this past week filming the commentary for america's list but i just don't like i it's a it's a kind of a gray area in terms of 
the behind the scenes stuff with a lot of that. And we don't really know the process of a whole bunch of it. But from what I understand, ladies and gentlemen, I do not believe there's any correlation between the America's List situation and the current status with the narrator and commentary on these past couple episodes of Street Outlaws. So that is all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so very much for watching TTVE to the very end of this week's episode of Street Race Talk. This past episode, the 405 show, was so good. This past stream was so good as well. And I cannot wait for this stream and this episode this Monday night. So make sure you guys tune in this Monday, 6.50 p.m. Central Standard Time to tune into the stream and where we get to watch the new episode of the 405 Out of Town Race versus Chicago and Kansas City. All together, it's going to be so much fun to watch. Make sure you guys tune into that. And make sure you guys click the little bell, turn the notifications on so you do not miss a single video that I upload because all of my videos that I upload go live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below about the current commentary with the 405 show. Do you think there's anything more like, do you think there's anything to it? What are your thoughts on that? Please leave it in the comment section down below. Make sure you check out MidwestStreetCars.com and use coupon code SAMSXYZ for 20% off your order. First link down in the description will take you directly to their store. I also set up a P.O. box, so if you guys would like to send me stuff, address is down below in the description. But like I said, that is all. Thank you so very much for watching TTVE. Hope you guys had a great week this week and are looking forward to a great weekend this weekend. And like I said, I honestly can't thank you guys enough for watching TTVE. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at SAMSXYZ. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is Sim. BBC XYZ signing out.